Hey guys, this is a unexpected video as I am in Manchester. I'm here for Madfest up north, which is a media and advertising festival. The reason I'm here talking to you in this video is because we just got an absolutely massive update from Alexa, something that's been long awaited, long delayed, but it's finally here, which is the new Alexa Plus functionality. And so I want to get into it and talk all about it what it means for consumers and what it also means for developers. So let's jump into it. So Amazon has finally announced the new AI powered Alexa Plus. This is their new, what will be a subscription service, but free to prime subscribers, a new service, which is basically going to bring all of the kind of functionality you're usually seeing in things like ChatGPT or Google Gemini, and obviously within ChatGPT and Claude and all those kind of language models to the Alexa smart speaker ecosystem. We learned an awful lot today about what Amazon are planning with this. And so I want to take you through some of the kind of key updates. The first thing is from a consumer perspective, this is going to completely change the way in which people interact with their Alexa devices. The new device is going to get a fancy new set of animations, as we can see here in this demo, which is going to mean that it looks a lot more appealing, particularly on the big screens of the new Echo Show 21, the 15, the 10 and the 8. These are the devices that Amazon are going to prioritize in their new set up. They've got new home screen animations, new interactions, new widgets, and a lot more power under the hood. It's coming to all of the devices. So it will work in the headless mode of things like the Echo, the Dot, the small ones, the clocks, also to earbuds and other Echo enabled or Alexa enabled products throughout the suite. So things like the glasses and other devices that have Echo enabled. There's also going to be a new Alexa.com chat mode as well. So you're going to find that you can actually access this in the browser too. Most Panay was on stage, who recently joined the Amazon team last year, coming over from Microsoft, where he was responsible for the Surface line of devices. They came on stage and demoed a whole bunch of stuff, including a load of integrations with platforms like OpenTable, Uber, some travel operators and other booking facilitators, mostly in the US, which is where this is going to roll out. First of all, it's going to come to the US and the other countries to come in the future. This is going to be a $9 upgrade if you're not a Prime subscriber, but if you are a Prime subscriber, which I would imagine most heavy Alexa users probably are, then you're going to get this included as part of your Prime subscription, which I think is a big relief to a lot of people. Certainly, we were worried in the developer community that if this was going to be a paid upgrade, there was going to be probably a lot of limitations to it. But the fact it's included in Prime, I think, is a really big win for Amazon and a good choice by the team. There was lots that they showed on stage in this event, which is literally only just finished wrapping up. So thanks to The Verge here for their updates. But you can see here lots of updates. It's going to integrate with things like your calendar functionality, and all of your smart home stuff as well, which I think is going to make a big difference for people who've often been frustrated with setting up things like routines and, and just managing your smart home. It can be a real pain. So lots of really interesting stuff here. The new platform is coming in the next couple of months. It's going to roll out first in the US and then to other countries. And this whole Alexa Plus thing is going to create a very obvious separation between regular Alexa users. And I think when you see the demo for yourself, you'll find that this is super compelling if it does all the things that it says it's going to do, then I think that it's going to be really, really powerful. Now you can go and register for this. If you're a prime subscriber in the US, Alexa Plus, it says it's coming soon. So you can go and sign this up. This is going to be a free prime benefit for customers or a $9 a month upgrade. Basically means that you can talk to it really naturally. So much like talking with voice mode, if you've used that on chat or Claude or Gemini Live, you can have this kind of continuous open conversation with the AI. It will know all of the details are stored securely within your Alexa account. If you've connected things like your calendar and your contacts, then it's going to know information about that as well. All Amazon say securely within their cloud environment. And basically means that you can kind of get more done than they show here use cases of things like being able to look for a birthday gift and knowing things like the date of the birthday of the person, being able to find products, obviously on Amazon is going to be a killer use case for this stuff, but also being able to do things like bookings. They've got integrations directly with TripAdvisor. We've had some experience of building stuff with them for TripAdvisor with the recent Viator integration we've done for the Alexa hospitality team. So we know that there's been a lot of work under the hood for this stuff. You're also seeing things like Grubhub, there's Viator being mentioned there and many others. So I think this is super interesting. I mean, if it is going to finally give me the updates that I want in real time, then I think the capabilities look really compelling. The thing I think that's really interesting is this idea of it coming to on the web as well. Finally, that Alexa might have a web interface, an app interface in the new Alexa app that might actually challenge a lot of the functionality that many people go to things like ChatGPT or Claude for today. So the fact it's going to live in those places, I think is really interesting. But the, the killer application for this has to be the Echo device ecosystem and also the Fire TV ecosystem. The fact it's coming to these devices 
which we are naturally prone to talking to, which maybe people aren't so ready to do on their phones, I think is the killer thing, right? AI now ambulantly in your home, you can wander through. Often, you know, many people have these devices in lots of different parts of their houses. The fact it's going to travel with you across all these different devices, I think is super, super compelling. And obviously now coming to the browser is going to be really cool. So that's what it means for consumers. What does it mean for developers? Well, for those people that have for the past few years, kind of retreated a little bit from building Alexa skills. These are the apps that kind of live within the Alexa ecosystem. I think this is going to be a renaissance moment for building for the smart home and building for the Alexa ecosystem. You obviously can build things like custom GPTs and loads of apps are integrating with the AI APIs to be able to pull tools from things like OpenAI's models or Claude's models into their own platforms. But this is the other way around. This is about bringing your data, your APIs, your content to the Alexa platform and being able to access it in all of these different places. And basically, if you bring that content to the Alexa platform once, then it shows up everywhere, which I think is super interesting. It means that basically, if you've got a content library or a tool, you can now integrate it with the Alexa service. There's going to be a new Alexa AI Action SDK, which basically means that you can bring personalization and task completion capabilities to your skills or the skills paradigm actually, I think really goes away with this. You're just bringing essentially either an AI action or a web action or a multi-agent action to the integration with Alexa, meaning that if you've got a large content store or you've got some kind of dynamic controller, or as the Ticketmaster demo here would suggest, you know, an API like a booking API for Ticketmaster or an Uber booking, all this stuff basically means that you just bring your APIs and you bring your content to the ecosystem. And then all of the logic that sits within this new Alexa Plus basically does the working out of whether or not you're trying to talk to a platform like Ticketmaster to book a ticket. Obviously, it raises some interesting questions. Previously, the way that we handled app routing within Alexa was using intents. People had to know essentially the wake word or the invocation for your individual apps. So for example, the Dyson Care app that we built with the Dyson team, you have to say, yeah, Alexa, open Dyson Care. It routes to it. In this paradigm, Basically, Amazon's going to do the working out of which tool to call for you. And so we may still have that challenge of making it clear when you're a user interested to see kind of how this stuff plays out. But yeah, I think yeah, this is super exciting. And you know, as the Verge headline kind of you know, reads out here, you know, this is a, a long announced, you know, kind of a long trailed thing. It was first announced over a year ago at CES. But the fact that we are now finally seeing it coming, I think, is a big difference for the Alexa ecosystem. So would love your thoughts in the comments below. Let me know if you would like to get involved with building for this new platform. The team here at Seven are well versed in building Alexa, one of the biggest platform providers for building for Alexa in Europe. And so we'd love to help you get your APIs set up and your actions set up. And if you're just a consumer and you're just using this at home, I'd love to know whether or not you think you would actually use this as a use case. Obviously here in Europe, we're waiting to see whether or not this will roll out. I would imagine it will roll out in the UK. As for whether or not it will comply with some of the European regulations, we're yet to see, but US customers are going to see this coming soon. So anyway, I wanted to jump straight on this as it's being announced and get your thoughts and let me know in the comments if you've got any replies and you want to discuss it further. All right. Peace out from Manchester. If you're here for Madfest, I hope you enjoy it. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one.